So in this module, we are going to discuss cache coherency protocol design for uh, snoop-based systems as well as directory-based systems. And also we discuss uh, as a case study, uh, three-state uh, invalidation-based protocol. So first we start with the snoop-based uh, uh, design. So when we have the number of cores in our multi-core system uh, is four or eight, then we can consider these cores uh, through a bus-based uh, a communication mechanism. So for example, in this particular uh, uh, figure, we can clearly see here it is a four core system and each of these cores are connected uh, through a common bus. And uh, here, uh, each core has a private cache and there is a shared cache. Uh, this shared cache is shared by all the cores and after that there is a memory and I/O system. And in order to implement a cache coherency protocol, so for each of these private caches, we are going to have uh, uh, a separate table and this table is going to give uh, a state uh, information associated with each of the blocks that is present uh, uh, in this private cache. So effectively, there is a one-on-one -on -one match between each block in the private cache with uh, an entry in this table. And uh, so here each entry is uh, providing n-bit coherent state. And uh, so this is going to specify the state in which the block corresponding block is present at that particular point of time. If you are considering a, a four state uh, cache coherency protocol, then uh, we are going to have uh, two bit information associated with each of the blocks present in this private cache. So given this uh, a multi core system, now when we want to implement a snoop based cache coherency protocol, so what typically happens is, Whenever a core wants to update or whenever a core wants to read some data and if it finds a miss in its private cache, then it is going to place a transaction on the bus. For example, say here core 4 wants to access some data and it finds a miss in the private cache. So it is going to place a transaction on the bus. And as soon as a transaction is placed on the bus, all other cache controllers associated with our multi-core system. Uh, will snoop on the bus and they take this transaction and uh, using the address specified in this transaction, they are going to search in their private caches or the associated shared cache. So as a second step, these cache controllers will snoop the bus and they will search in their caches. And uh, if any cache finds a match for this uh, request, then that cache is going to respond uh, to this particular action either by supplying the data or by invalidating their data or updating their data and so on. That depends on the type of protocol what we are going to uh, design. So effectively in the snoop based system, the cores are connected by a common bus and whenever any core wants to initiate any transaction, uh, it is going to place the transaction on the bus and all other cache controllers will snoop on the bus and they will take the appropriate action. Uh, in their uh, caches. So here we are going to maintain the state information for each of the blocks and there is a state transition diagram associated with each block. And depending on the transaction that is placed on the bus, so the state of a block can be changed by the cache controller. So effectively, the cache controller updates the state of each block in response to processor and snoop events that are there on the bus and also it updates the bus uh, transactions. So this is the overall idea of a snoop based cache coherency protocol. Now we are going to uh, discuss a three state cache coherency protocol for write back caches and uh, we are going to use invalidation based uh, mechanism. So in the three state write back invalidation based protocol, we have uh, uh, invalid state, shared state and exclusive or modified state. So here, as I mentioned previously, so we have state information for each of the blocks uh, present in the cache. So now, the state transition is going to happen based on the protocol whatever we are designing and now we will see how the state transitions happens when we consider invalidation based protocol. So now uh, consider uh, a scenario where a core 4 wants to read some data. So it is going to issue a CPU read request and unfortunately the cache associated with core 4 
uh, finds that the request is a miss. And whenever core 4 incurs a CPU read miss and it asks the cache replacement policy to select a victim block so that it can keep the new data into that uh, victim block location and assume that the victim block location is in a state invalid. Now we have to change the state of this uh, uh, location from invalid to shared. So that is what is represented by this uh, transition. And also because now core 4 incurs a read miss, so the cache controller associated with core 4 is going to place a transaction on the bus and the transaction is read miss transaction uh, for this particular uh, uh, address. And now consider another scenario, a core 4 generated a read request and which is a miss in the cache. Now the cache replacement policy identifies a victim block uh, which is in a location whose state is exclusive. Then what is going to happen? Whenever the victim block is in a location exclusive, in that case also for a CPU read miss, we are going to change the state of that location from exclusive to shared. And also we are going to place a transaction on the bus that is a read miss uh, transaction for this block. And compared to this invalid to shared transition, when we are moving from exclusive to shared, we are also having another uh, uh, the operation that is write back block operation. Because our victim block is in an exclusive state that indicates that a victim block is having the dirty data and we have to write this dirty data back to the lower level cache. So in order to update the lower level cache with this dirty data, we have to write this data back and that is indicated by this write back block operation. So as a result, whenever we are moving from exclusive state to shared state, we have to write whatever the data that is present in this exclusive uh, state location to the lower level cache. So that is what we have performed here. Now consider the third scenario. Again, uh, core 4 initiated a read miss and uh, uh, cache replacement policy identifies a victim block. But now the victim block is in a location whose state is shared. Now what is going to happen? When the victim block is in a location whose state is shared, then we are not going to change the state of this location and we retain the uh, state as it is, uh, but similar to all other uh, uh, transitions, here also we are going to place a read miss transaction on the bus. When we are moving from invalid to shared or exclusive to shared, we placed a read miss transaction on a bus for a CPU read miss and similarly here also we are going to place a read miss transaction on the bus. So effectively, in this three state protocol, we have three states and for each of these states, when there is a CPU read miss, we are going to place a read miss transaction on the bus. Now when we place a read miss transaction on the bus, all the cache controllers associated with our multi-core system will snoop on the bus and they take this read miss transaction and they search in their caches and if they find the matching data, then they have to respond provided they have the data in exclusive state. So that is what is indicated by this. So whenever let us say core 3 is having the requested data in modified state, then core 3 cache controller will snoop on the bus and it finds that there is a transaction for a read miss for a particular block and it has that block in the modified state, then core 3 is going to write back this data by placing this data on the bus. So that is what is indicated by this. And now after core 3 places this block of data on the bus, now core 4 is going to get this block of data in the appropriate location and as a result now core 4 and core 3 both are going to have uh, the same data. But now according to the definition of exclusive or modified state, at any point of time only one instance of a block will be there uh, in a multi-core system in a modified state. When a block is in a modified state, then automatically uh, we have to know that only one instance of that block will be there in modified state in all the caches in our system. And uh, once a block is in a modified state, even the shared cache is having a stale copy. 
But now, because core 3 and core 4 both have the block of data which is same, then as a result, we have to change the state of this block in core 3. Previously, the block state is in exclusive. Uh, so now, we have to change the state of this block in the core 3 uh, by changing it from exclusive to shared. Effectively, at the end of uh, this operation, now core 3 and core 4 both have this block of data in the shared state. Now, we will consider a write request. So, core 4 generated a CPU write request and it finds that this write request is a miss in the cache. Now, again, the cache replacement policy associated with the private cache of core 4 is going to select a victim block and uh, it finds a victim block which is in a location whose state is invalid. Now, what is that we are going to do? When it finds a block which is in an invalid state, now for this write miss request, the cache controller associated with uh, core 4 is going to place a transaction on the bus and the transaction is write miss transaction for that particular block. So, whenever uh, core 4 places this write miss transaction, it also changes the state of this location from invalid to exclusive because once the core 4 is going to get the data either from some other cache or from the uh, shared cache, then it is going to have exclusive permission on this block to perform whatever the operation it requires because this is a write request and as a result, we have to uh, change the state from invalid to exclusive. That is what we have done. And now, we will consider another scenario where core 4 generated a write request and again the cache replacement policy is going to select a victim block, but the victim block state is now uh, exclusive. So, that means a victim block is in a location whose state is exclusive, then uh, we are not going to change the state of this victim block location and we keep the state as it is. Uh, and also, because this is a write request, we are going to place a write miss transaction on the bus similar to uh, whatever we have done earlier. But whenever we are evicting a dirty block, we have to write this data back to the, uh, the shared cache. So, that is what is performed by this write back uh, block operation. So, other than this, the remaining things are same. So, in both the cases, there is a write miss and as a result, uh, we are going to place uh, a write miss transaction on the bus. Now, consider the third scenario. If the cache replacement policy selects a victim block which is in a state shared, now what is that we are going to do? Whenever our victim block is in a location whose state is shared, now we are just simply changing the state of that location from shared to exclusive and we are going to place the write miss transaction. Note that here the victim block is in a shared state, so as a result we do not have to write this data back to the shared cache because this is a shared uh, state, so automatically our shared cache is actually having the up to date data and as a result we do not have to write the data back. Note that only when we are evicting the dirty block, we have to write the data to the uh, lower level cache. In all other scenarios, we do not have to write the data back to the lower level caches. So, now here when there is a write miss, if the replacement policy selects an invalid uh, uh, block location, then we have this transition and uh, when the cache replacement policy selects a uh, uh, victim block which is in an exclusive location, then this is the transition and similarly, if the cache replacement policy selects a victim block which is in a location shared, then this is the state transition. So, clearly we can see here when there is a write miss transaction, then we are actually going to exclusive state at the end. Whereas, if there is a read request, we are actually going to uh, the shared state. And now for this write request, we place the write miss transaction and now we have to see what happens to this bus transaction because all the cache controller will snoop on the bus and they now find that there is a write miss transaction on the bus. And now if they have the data, they have to perform appropriate actions to their corresponding blocks. So, let us say core 3 is having this requested data in the exclusive state. Then first thing it has to do is, it has to place this data on the bus by performing a write back block uh, operation 
and also it has to invalidate its copy because we are going to perform a write operation and core 4 is now going to have the exclusive permission on this particular block. So, as a result even though core 3 is having this data and it has to invalidate its copy. So, that is what is represented by this state transition from exclusive to invalid and because this is a dirty data it has to place this block on the bus so that the shared cache is going to update its copy and uh, also uh, the requesting core that is core 4 is also going to get the data. And now consider another scenario where uh, only core 2 is having the data and that too in the shared state and now what is going to happen uh, for write miss transaction on the bus. So, when there is a write miss transaction on the bus and now core 2 is going to invalidate its copy and without placing this data on the bus. As I mentioned earlier for the shared blocks we do not have to write the data back to the lower level caches. So, we just simply invalidate. So, as a result at the end we can clearly see for a write operation if any other caches have the data either in the shared state or exclusive state they have to invalidate their copies. So, that the core which initiated this write request is going to get uh, the exclusive permission on that particular block and whereas, when we are performing a read operation then so, the resultant state will be the shared state and even if any other cache has the data in the exclusive state, it has to change the state from exclusive to shared by placing the data on the bus. And now, we will consider uh, another scenario where core 4 is generating a read request and read is a hit in the local cache and this hit happens to a location where the state of that uh, location is shared. So, that indicates that core 4 is actually having the block of data which is in a shared state and core 4 generated a request to that particular block. So, as a result it is a read hit and once there is a read hit and uh, uh, because this is a read request we do not have to change the state uh, from shared state. So, as a result there is a self loop here. Now, what happens if core 4 generated a read request, but now this time uh, this is a hit to a block which is in the exclusive state. So, in the case of uh, uh, the exclusive state also if there is a CPU read request hit then we are not going to change the state of that location and we retain the state as it is. And similarly even when there is a write request and this write request is a hit in a block whose state is the exclusive then also we are not going to change the state. Now, we will see what happens if there is a CPU write request which is a hit to a block which is in a location whose state is shared. Whenever we find a CPU write hit to a block which is in a state a shared then we have to change the state of that location from shared to exclusive because this is a write request as a result this requesting core needs to get the exclusive permission for that particular block. So, as a result uh, it is going to place an invalidate signal on the bus. So, by looking at this invalidate signal if any other caches have the data in the shared state then they have to invalidate their copies. So, that is what is given by this. Now, let us say core 4 generated a write request which is a hit in its private cache and core 2 and core 3 also having this data in the shared state then core 2 and core 3 have to invalidate their copies. So, that is what is indicated by this uh, state transition. So, effectively at the end of this write hit operation only core 4 is going to have the block in the exclusive state and core 2 and core 3 are going to invalidate their copies. So, this is about the three state write back invalidation protocol and it ensures that the coherence is maintained across multiple private caches in our multi core system. But the snoop based system will be realizable as long as the number of cores in our system is limited. Let us say if the number of uh, cores is 4 or 8 we can go for uh, a snoop based uh, system or a bus based uh, system for our multi core system design. But once the number of cores increases or beyond 8 then it may not be a good idea to interconnect these number of cores by using a common bus. In such scenarios we have to go for another type of uh, communication mechanism to interconnect these cores and we have to use interconnection networks. And this interconnection network can be a ring type of uh, topology or it can be a, 
mesh based topology or a torus topology or a different type of topologies. So as a result, when we want to scale up the number of cores in our system, then we have to interconnect these cores by using some interconnection network and also once we have more number of cores, it is not a good idea to keep our shared cache in one particular uh, location and we have to distribute our shared cache or the shared memory across all these cores. We see here there are multiple cores and each core has it is a private cache and there is a cache controller and there is a shared distributed memory across all these cores. We can treat this as a shared distributed memory or also we can consider this as a shared distributed uh, the cache. So here this memory is distributed and shared across all. So as a result an application running on this core can share the data that is associated with this last core or similarly the application running on this core can share the data that is uh, available with this memory and so on. And because this shared and distributed memory, so as a result uh, uh, at any point of time a given address will be uniquely identified only in one particular memory chunk. And now because we are distributing the memory across all the cores, now in order to maintain the cache coherency in this many core system, what we have to do is we have to consider a directory for each of this memory chunk. So there is a one on one map between uh, directory and the memory so that for each block in the memory there is an entry in the directory and this entry in the directory is going to specify what are all the cores that are sharing the corresponding block of memory and also this directory entry specifies whether this block is in a modified state or whether it is shared by multiple cores or it is not shared by any core and so on. So that is what is uh, given by this. We can clearly see here, so there are presence bits, so n bits are there and each bit is corresponding to each of the cores and also in addition to that there is one extra bit that is called as a dirty bit and this dirty bit is going to specify whether this block is dirty and if it is dirty then it is also going to specify uh, which one is having this dirty block uh, in their private caches. And in addition to this directory, we also have uh, the state transition diagram for each of the blocks uh, that are present in the private caches. So as a result, when we are designing a directory based cache coherency protocol, we have to consider a directory for each of this shared memory and we have to consider a state transition diagram for each of the blocks uh, present in the private caches. So here in this directory based cache coherency protocols, we maintain the state information for each of the blocks explicitly. Uh, so here that is what is mentioned. So for each block in the memory, we are maintaining uh, the directory entry. So we associate uh, a state information for each of the memory blocks in this shared memory. And also we record the state of each of the blocks in the cache. And uh, so this state is going to specify what is the state in which that particular block is present, whether it is a modify, invalid or uh, uh, the shared state and so on if you are considering a three state invalidation based protocol. So whenever there is a cache miss from a particular node or a core, then the corresponding core is going to communicate this information with the home directory. So that means, for example, core n is generating a request and which finds a miss in the cache. This cache is a private to this core and now it sends the request to this uh, cache controller and cache controller will look at the address of that request and accordingly it is going to identify the home node for this particular uh, request and it sends this request on the interconnection network and it reaches the home node. And, uh, uh, once it goes to the home node then it determines what is the state of that particular block and so on. So that is what is given here. So it determines whether uh, where the valid block is available and what are the further actions we have to take on this particular block and also it performs a set of transactions to keep the directory up to date for each uh, operation whatever we are going to perform on cache blocks present in our uh, the private caches. So in order to deal with uh, this many core system, here we use uh, naming conventions for each of the nodes 
and we call the node as a home node, a requesting node or owner node. So whenever some core generates a request and uh, given this request address, we know in which memory chunk this particular uh, uh, the block is allocated and uh, that particular node is called as the home node. For example, when we send a request from this core and this request uh, address is allocated in this memory chunk, then we call C1 as the home node for this particular request. And as I mentioned earlier, because we are sharing and distributing the memory across all the cores, as a result for each memory address, we can identify only one memory chunk. We cannot replicate uh, the same memory block in multiple memory chunks. So we can uniquely identify a memory chunk for a given address and uh, wherever we find uh, the, this particular address, the corresponding core is called as the home node. And we also have owner node. Here the owner node indicates the node which actually holds the valid copy of the data. This valid copy can be like the dirty block or it can be a shared block and so on. For example, core 4 generated a read request and right now core 2 is actually having that particular block, then core 2 is called as the owner node and uh, core 4 is called as the requesting node. A requesting node is nothing but the node which actually generates a request. Given these definitions, now we will see how we design a directory based cache coherency protocol. As I mentioned earlier, so in the cache coherency protocol for a scalable multi-core processors, we need to consider the state transition diagrams associated with the directories as well as we need to consider state transition diagrams for each of the individual cache lines that present in our private caches. And the directory is maintained at the shared cache or the shared memory and as a result we have to consider a state transition diagram for each entry for this directory separately. And because we are going to perform operations on our uh, individual blocks present in the private cache, then we need to maintain a state transition diagram for each of the individual cache lines that are present in the private caches. And this is a state transition diagram and right now here we are assuming uh, in this directory based protocol also we are implementing the three state uh, uh, write back invalidation based cache coherency protocol. So if you see this state transition diagram, this is similar to the state transition diagram whatever we discussed for snoop based systems. In both the things, the state transitions and the transactions we place on the bus are the same. The only difference is previously in the snoop based systems whenever there is a CPU read miss or CPU write miss, we are going to place a transaction that is a read miss transaction or write miss transaction on the bus. But now here in the scalable multi core systems. So we have interconnection network which is not a simple bus. So as a result we have to send these uh, read miss or write miss transactions as messages in our uh, uh, the interconnection network. So that is what is represented here. So whenever there is a CPU read miss and if our uh, uh, cache replacement policy identifies a victim block which is in a location whose state is invalid, then we are going to send a transaction. Uh, onto the interconnection network that is this send read miss message. So we are going to place a read miss message on the interconnection network so that this read miss message will go on the uh, traverse on the interconnection network and finally it reach the home node. And once it reaches the home node then based on our directory based protocol we are going to see what operations are going to happen and so on and that we are going to discuss in the next file. And similarly, if there is a write miss request and our uh, replacement policy selects a victim block which is in a location whose state is shared, then we are going to have a state transition from shared to modify and we are going to place uh, a write miss message transaction on the interconnection network so that this write miss message will be traversed on the interconnection network and uh, it will uh, reach its home node. Because for every memory address we have a unique memory chunk that is going to uh, specify the details about the sharer's information of that particular block. So as a result uh, whenever there is a message sent from any of the requesting cores, this message has to traverse on the interconnection network and it has to uh, reach the home node 
and the home node is the one which is going to specify what is the state of this particular block, whether this block is shared by some other cores or whether the block is owned by some other core and so on. So the state transmission diagram for individual cache lines in our private cache is same as the state transmission diagram whatever we discussed for uh, the snoop based cache coherency protocol. The only difference is we have to uh, come up with the state transition diagram for each of the directory entries or each of the blocks that are present in our uh, shared memory or uh, shared cache and that we are going to see uh, now. Now we are going to see the state transition diagram for each of the blocks that are present in our uh, shared memory or shared cache. So once a read miss or a write miss message from the requesting core reaches the home node and home node will find the state of that particular block in one of these three states. Either the block is not cached, the block is shared or the block is in the modified state. So let us assume that core 1 sends a read miss transaction on the interconnection network and core 4 is the home node for this particular block and now core 4 receives that particular read miss message and it identifies that this particular block is not cached anywhere. That means this particular block is not present in any of the private caches of our multi-core system. Now what is the transaction we are going to perform? When there is a read miss from core 1, core 4 is now going to supply the data because the block state is uncached at this point of time. That means it is not in any of the private caches of our multi-core system. So as a result, it is a responsibility of the home node to supply the data. So as a result, uh, core 4 is supplying the data by responding to this data value reply and also it is going to update the sharer's information in the corresponding directory entry by placing the core 1 ID. Now what happens? If core 1 is generating a right request and which is a miss, so there is a right miss uh, message and now this write miss message is uh, traversed on the interconnection network and it finally uh, reached uh, core 4 which is a home node. And core 4 identifies that this block is not cached in any of the private caches associated with our multi-core system. So that means the state is uncached but this is a write miss request. Now what is going to happen? Whenever there is a write miss and the block is not cached anywhere earlier, now we have to change the state of that block from uncached to the modify in the corresponding directory entry in the home node and because this is a write miss now is the home node's responsibility to supply the data back to core 1 so it is going to supply the data by using this data value reply and also because now core 1 is going to have this data in its private cache so we have to change the sharer's information and thus now sharer's information is equal to p or core 1 id so this is about handling a read miss or a write miss from a requesting core at the home node and the state of this block is in the uncached state. Now we will see what happens if there is a read miss or a write miss and if the block in the home node is in a shared state. When now there is a read miss from a core 1 and this core 1 sends the uh, read missed message on the interconnection network and now core 4 receives this particular uh, read miss message because core 4 is the home node for this particular request address and now it identifies that this block is in the shared state. So now once it is in the shared state because this is a read request we are not going to change the state of this block. So we will retain the state as it is but because we have to supply the data to core 1 because the core 1 incurs a read miss now this home node is going to supply the data by using this data value reply and also it is going to update the sharer's information. Previously let us say core 2 and core 3 are sharing this particular block. Now core 1 is also requesting this block for read operation. So as a result now we have to add core 1 also to the sharer's list. Effectively now after this operation now core 1, core 2, core 3 are sharers for this particular block and core 4 is the home node for this particular uh, the block address. So this is about a read miss transaction and the block is in the shared state in the home node. Now what happens if there is a write miss? Whenever there is a write request, whether it is a write miss or a write hit, now what we have to do is this write transaction or write message 
will come on the interconnection network and it reaches the home node and now home node identifies that this block is in the shared state and uh, when it identifies that this is a write request automatically it has to change the state of this uh, block from shared to exclusive or modify because this is a write request so as a result only the requesting core needs to have exclusive permission on that particular block so as a result uh, invalidated signal will be sent to all the sharers because the sharers information is already available with the home node in the corresponding directory entry so it is going to send invalidated signals to all the sharers so that they will invalidate their copies and at the end only the requesting core is going to have this data and that too in the modify or exclusive state. Because all other sharers are invalidated their copies, so as a result now the sharers list will be updated with only the requesting core ID. And also if this is a write miss request from the requesting core then automatically uh, this home node has to supply the data back to the requesting node that is done by the data value reply. So this is about handling read miss and write request write hit or write miss uh, to a block which is in a shared state in the home node. Now we will see what happens when we have a read miss or a write miss to a block which is in the modified state. So whenever there is a read miss from core 1, so this core 1 is going to send this read miss message on the interconnection network so that the home node that is core 4 receives this message and core 4 identifies that the block is in the modified state and also it knows which core is actually owning this particular block in the modified state. So as a result first it sends a request to the owner node uh, to fetch the data that is by using this fetch operation. So as a result now if core 3 is actually owning this particular block of data then core 3 has to send this data to the home node that is core 4 and after that core 4 is going to supply this data to the requesting core that is core 1 by using this data value reply and after that because this is a read request now we have to update the sharer's information uh, with the previous sharer as well as the new sharer. Previous sharer is actually core 3 which was having the data in the modified state but because core 1 is also requesting the data for uh, read operation so as a result uh, core 3 is going to change the state of this particular block from modified to the shared so that will be reflected in the directory entry in the home node. So now the home node is going to change the state of this block uh, from modified to shared and also it adds core 3 and core 1 to this sharers list. So that is what is indicated by this. So this is about read miss uh, to a block which is in a modified state in the home node. Now what happens if it is a write miss? If it is a write miss and uh, the block in the home node is in the modified state then we are not going to change the state of this block we still retain the state modify as it is but previously let us say core 3 is actually having this data in a modified state and now core 1 wants to write to that particular block. So as a result first step we have to do is we have to get the data from core 3 uh, to home node that is core 4 by using this fetch operation and after that core 3 has to invalidate its copy because core 1 is actually requesting this data for write operation so as a result we have to invalidate by sending this invalidate signal to core 3 so that core 3 will invalidate its copy and now uh, core 1 is actually having this data in the exclusive state so as a result we have to update the sharers information as the sharers equal to the core 1 id and because core 1 is actually incurred a write miss so we have to supply the data from the home node to the core 1 so that is by using this data value reply. So this is the whole process that is going to take place when we are dealing with a read miss a write miss uh, for a block which is uncached or shared or modified in our home directory entries and also we have to consider another scenario where let us say if core 3 is having a block of data in the modified state. When a block is in a modified state we know that only one cache can hold this particular block of data in the modified state and none other caches have the data. Now if core 3 cache replacement policy evicts this particular block, so now what is going to happen? When our core 3 evicts 
this modified block or the dirty block then we have to write this data to the home node and once we write the data to the home node now this particular block is not cached by any of the caches in our multi core system. So, that is indicated by this particular uh, state transition. So, core 3 previously having this block of data in the modified state, but there is a write back uh, operation because uh, the cache replacement policy associated with core 3 is actually evicting this block. So, we have to write this data back and when we are performing this write back operation. So, as a result core 3 now is going to invalidate its copy. So, as a result we do not have this block in any of the private caches in our multi core system. So, effectively sharers list will be empty. So, that is what is indicated here and we have to change the state of this particular block in the home node from modify to the uncached state. In addition to this uh, the state transition diagram for each of the directory entries uh, for each of the cache blocks that are present in the shared cache or the shared memory. We also have uh, state transition diagrams for each of the blocks that present in our private caches and that is the reason why when we are dealing with the scalable multi core systems and uh, when we are designing a directory based cache coherency protocols, we have to design cache coherency protocol for each of the blocks that are present in the uh, private caches associated with all our uh, multi core systems as well as we have to come up with a state transition diagram for each of the blocks that are present in the shared memory or the shared cache. So, with that uh, this uh, directory based cache coherency protocol design is completed and uh, so I am concluding this uh, cache coherence protocol design module. Thank you.